Hello and welcome to Endpoint SWAT. Today we are going to show you how to block all wireless traffic when an Ethernet interface is active uh, using Endpoint Protection 11. So for starters, uh, first thing that we're going to need to do is we're going to need to select the group of clients that we want to uh, perform this action on. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a new group here. I'm going to call this test. And on my test group, I am going to go from the clients tab on the blue bar over to the policies tab. And I'm going to turn off inheritance so that I could modify my location uh, settings. So if you're not familiar with it, Symantec Endpoint Protection, it has location awareness. Uh, what this does is it gives me the ability to change policies based off of certain criteria. Uh, this is extremely useful in doing things like enabling live update when a client is off the network, but having them get updates from the manager when they're on the network. Today we're going to use it to disable our wireless uh, card when we're plugged into the Ethernet. So, to prevent Ethernet bridging. So, for starters, I turned off inheritance. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is add a location. Now, I could use my default location um, for my Ethernet if I chose to, uh, but for just for demonstration purposes, I'm going to create a new location. So, I choose new location. And for that, I'm going to name this location Ethernet. And hit next. For my condition, I'm going to choose a network connection type and I'm going to choose Ethernet. So, what this is going to do is when my Ethernet card is active, it's going to show me, put me in this Ethernet location. So, click finish. My Ethernet location has been added. And you can see now I have the duplicated policies from my default setting into my Ethernet. Um, next thing I'm going to do is add another location for wireless. And again, I'm going to label this appropriately. And I'm also going to choose network connection type for this location, uh, but this time I'm going to choose wireless and hit next finish all right so now inside of my console I have actually three locations all with identical policies right now but I have a location which is default um, so if none of the criteria trigger I would get those default policies I have Ethernet uh, location when uh, my Ethernet card is enabled I will be using the policies from this location and I have my wireless location which will trigger uh, when I'm on my wireless. What we're going to do is we're going to create a firewall policy, assign it to Ethernet, and block wireless traffic when Ethernet's active. But before I do that, I need to come in here and I need to modify my wireless location. So what I did was I came over to Tasks, Manage Location, and this brings me into uh, where I can manage my location. And you can see the criteria that I selected for both of these. What I want to do is I want to modify this wireless location so that whenever I plug in to uh, Ethernet, even if wireless is enabled, when I plug into Ethernet, it is going to point me to that Ethernet specific policies which are going to be blocking wireless. So basically, um, if I'm on Ethernet, I receive the policies that block wireless. If my wireless becomes active, then I'll switch to wireless, but only if Ethernet is disabled. So how do we do that? I'm going to add another criteria with the AND relationship. Okay. I'm also, for this location, I'm going to choose network connection type. And I'm going to say if the client computer does not use network connection type for Ethernet, then we'll be on wireless. So basically, what we're saying is, if you're on the Ethernet, use the Ethernet policies. If you're on a wire, if your wireless uh, interface is active and your Ethernet is not active, then we'll use the wireless policies. Notice by default, this location awareness is being checked every four seconds. 
Uh, that's typical and usually doesn't need to be modified. It enables us to change locations very quickly it, uh, when the conditions are met. So now I have my location set. The next thing I gotta do is I need to modify that firewall. So I'm gonna modify this policy and I'm gonna block wireless if I'm in my ethernet location. But a lot of customers uh, will end up trying to modify this policy here and create a non-shared policy. My recommendation is to uh, not do that. My recommendation is to come over here to your policies on the blue bar and I kind of think of this as my policy library. The problem with changing your policies over here uh, in the clients tab is that if I if I have 50 or 60 groups and I have a whole bunch of uh, non-shared policies let's say that um, an outbreak occurs and I need to increase my scan time I would have to go into each non-shared policy to see what that scan time is configured to um, whereas if I use it, just uh, come over here and do it in the policy library I could use a shared policy instead of a non-shared policy and that would enable me to just change it in one location instead of having to go to each and every single non-shared policy so I'm gonna call this block wireless and I have to call it two because the rules still there from when I was testing and I could either create a new policy or if I have an existing firewall policy in my environment I could duplicate that policy so now that I have my rule policies uh, set up I come in here and I'll add a new rule and what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a blank rule okay and I'm going to move this blank rule up to the top so maximize this window so everybody can see okay and the first thing I'm going to do is rename this rule to block wireless I'm going to change the severity from major to information. In your environment, you can set that to whatever you want um, to identify it correctly for you. Um, this is ex extremely helpful. Notice that there's multiple levels of, of uh, severity. So example, six major, seven major, eight major. Um, when I'm in my monitors tab and I need to query for specific events, this will help me uh, pinpoint the specific events that I'm looking for. So informational. Application is any. Host is any. Time is any. Service will keep as default. On adapters, what we want to do is modify this adapter to wireless. And then we're going to change our action to block. Now, the semantic endpoint protection firewall is order-based, so it's going to process the rules up at, up at the top first. Um, so in this scenario, once I assign this to my Ethernet location, if we see wireless uh, adapter enabled, we're going to block any traffic coming from that wireless adapter. Now that I have my rule created, I'm going to save it, hit OK. And it's not assigned, so I'm going to go ahead and assign it. Choose my test group and I'm going to choose my Ethernet location. I'm only going to assign it to my Ethernet location. Okay, now that that policy has been assigned, if I have a client in this location and they're on their Ethernet, they are going to go to the Ethernet policy which contains this block wireless policy. If they enable wireless and Ethernet still enabled, they will continue to stay in this Ethernet uh, location. However, if they're only on wireless, they'll use this firewall policy, which is a standard uh, policy with the, the standard rules that they have. Uh, as always, before you implement this into your production environment, you should test it to make sure that it works as expected in your environment. Uh, in a lab, in a lab type scenario, once you feel comfortable in the lab scenario, I would perform a pilot. Um, on some non-critical systems to make sure that in the environment everything works as expected uh, before you go full force. But this policy would, would enable you to block wireless traffic when Ethernet's active using semantic endpoint protection 11.